Dungeon Fighter Online gets reborn with Act 1 of Season 2. Dom announced a second closed beta test for Black Desert and offers character creation for free. Paladins introduces two new game modes, and Firefall hits the radar again with the Razor's Edge update. What's happening guys, James Blon here with MMOS.com with a quick weekly recap for MMO news and announcements for the week ending January 25th, 2016. Starting off the news this week, League of Legends is proud to present a brand new season and a brand new trailer promoting it. This season, Riot is offering new choices to master, making each game more unique, improving how players compete, and introducing new ways to connect with your friends in game and out, like a new League Friends app that syncs your conversations from any device. The new trailer here is pretty cool and inspirational, showing players around the world having a great time playing with friends, but I've got to say, besides that, in the comment section of this particular video, the comment of the year already goes to the JR7360 who says, you forgot to show the 12 year old kid that tells you to go kill yourself and that your mom is fat. JR7360 is right. Now I kind of feel like this trailer is not entirely complete without that. GG JR7360, GG. On a similar note, our first taste of Season 3 for Smite is nearly upon us. This past week, the Round 1 patch notes were officially revealed in about a 90-minute live stream on Twitch. Don't worry, we've got them all summed up on the site posted in MMO Huts, but the biggest things talked about were things like the massive overhaul of itemization in relationship to the exchange of active purchases for free trinkets. Still kind of sad learning they removed Combat Blink altogether, but then again, I might be the only one who's going to miss that. Along with that, there were changes and nerfs to CC overall. God balances, of course, the first of which puts Amaterasu in check a little bit more. Apparently, they've decided to throw bells on her to act as a nerf. So if she catches you, you're still pretty much dead anyway, but at least now you'll hear bells while she's ulting you, bringing back the PTSD and beta players who still remember Guan Yu's bongos of doom. Beyond all of that, there's also a really cool new lineup for skins worth checking out as well. Head over to the Season 3 Round 1 Patch Notes Summary page at MMOS.com to catch up on all the details headed our way in Smite. Also with Hi res Studios, Paladins drops its closed beta 12 patch, introducing the new payload and survival game modes, a new stealth mechanic that seems all too familiar, the respawn beacon some of us have seen before, and major champion tweaks. The payload game mode takes place on the new outpost map and is set up so that way one team defends while the other attacks with a mine cart full of bombs that they must escort through the map. If a member of the team with the payload is near the payload, it advances along the tracks towards checkpoints, which adds time to the time frame that you have in order to get the payload into the enemy base and win. Enemies standing near the payload cause it to stop until they are either killed or pushed away. You can also use the grass now to become invisible to enemy players and ambush them from areas on each one of the maps. That seems pretty familiar. They also added a respawn beacon that you might recognize from Global Agenda that lets you and your team essentially choose where you want to teleport to after respawning, adding another strategic aspect to the gameplay. They've also added in a survival mode that acts almost like a last man standing mode, except there's this huge cloud of fog that rolls in and sort of keeps you from standing in the same spot very long. This time around, they've done even more gameplay mechanic tweaks to champions, as well as cards, which is as to be expected in an early beta game. The game is definitely shaping up to what it's supposed to be, patch by patch, and this one is pretty good size. Next up, we've got some new videos and updates for Paragon. The new mid lane push gameplay video you see playing here showcases four new heroes Gadget and Fang Mao pushing mid, while Rampage defends and Kalari ganks. It's kind of a nice representation of the different archetypes of heroes, as well as some of the map's verticality. The second video, the one you see playing here, goes over some of the major changes added to the game for Alpha 4, which is going on now. For their latest update, they've increased the overall movement speed of the heroes, making them actually feel faster than they did before. They've introduced new death recap information that will help you determine which cards to upgrade and which abilities to level up. But one cool feature added super early in terms of game development is the replay system. They've added it in this update for players to use, and they also use it themselves to film these gameplay videos. With each video announcement they put out, it really makes me want to try this game more and more. Pretty much out of the blue, Firefall is back on the radar this week with a huge new update Red 5 just launched. The update is called Update 1.6 Razor's Edge, and one of the major highlights is the return of Arena PvP in full swing. Now, this update brings just a preview of the Arena PvP with 
their classic Jetfall game mode. Some of you guys might remember that. And of course, more modes will be available later. Holdout Jericho is a brand new instance PvE game type for players at max level. Here, squads challenge themselves by protecting a melding repulsor against endless waves of Chosen. Of course, each wave getting increasingly difficult. Also for max level battle frames, we see Titan Battle, Defense of Dredge, a 10 pilot platoon PvE mission to help defend Dredge from the Chosen. Among plenty of other tweaks, all battle frames have received a full design pass with the overall goal of providing clean and easy to read combat along with making each battle frame feel diverse and meaningful again. And there's even more to come. Head over to the site post to check out the summary of the huge update and much needed update to Firefall. Also last week, Nosgoth officially introduced its newest map, the Silenced Cathedral, a human-made weapon inside a giant cathedral that was overrun by vampires. Manifesting itself in both the literal and metaphorical sense, the new map is littered with examples of vampiric experimentation and torture. A more literal darkness envelops some of the exterior locations between the buildings within which smart vampires can attempt to conceal themselves. In a way, this map favors the vampires a little more so. Death hides behind every corner for the humans, it seems. If you haven't already, check out my early access preview linked in the description below. Next up, Dungeon Fighter Online just got reborn with Act 1 of Season 2. Here we see three Second Awakenings happening at once. One for the female gunner as the Crimson Rose, the male mage as the Oblivion, and the male fighter as the Nin Emperor. Beyond that, plenty of system changes and upgrades have been added in, including drop system increases for legendary and unique equipment. The dungeon difficulty has been changed and expanded, removing easy and adding in king and slayer difficulties. Overall, quest improvements have been introduced along with questing UI changes. Some dungeons themselves have been completely reworked. Character balances have been issued for pretty much every class, and the same thing goes for PvP balancing. This is undoubtedly a massive update, as they said it would be. PFO is going to be completely different in 2016. This next bit of news you guys should definitely already know about. Blade and Soul has officially launched in the West, and as we predicted, despite how many servers there are, the queue to get into the game is definitely worse than Arc Age when it launched. But if you do happen to get in, it's wonderful, according to some of my friends who managed to wait the several hours it took to get in. Hashtag worth it. The other cool news is NCSoft has already brought us a sneak peek at their plans for content updates over the coming months, which includes more late game content and the highly anticipated Warlock class. What's even cooler is we're having a character creation contest at MMOS.com, kind of like the one we did with Black Desert where you guys voted for your favorite characters that we made. Well, this time around, we want you guys to make characters that we can vote on. Post a screenshot of a character or celebrity you've tried to recreate in-game together for a chance to win a $25 NC coin card. Seeing that you've got nothing better to do while you're waiting in queue, do your best to recreate a character. And if you win, you get premium status, if you want to buy that, so you can fast-track yourself through the queue. Theoretically. Check for the side post link in the description below for more details. On a similar note, Dom announced last week that Black Desert's second and final closed beta test will begin on February 18th. Players who have pre-ordered the Explorers or Conquerors pack will have automatic access to the beta, whereas players who want to get in can apply for access in early February. More details about the second closed beta test, including the end date, improvements over the first data, and special events will be announced in the coming weeks. Beyond that, Dom Games is really excited to reveal the standalone launch of the Black Desert Character Creator, which is absolutely free. You can let your imagination run wild, creating characters like crazy, and, and then import them into the actual game. For those of you that are really disappointed the game isn't free to play, well, I guess now a part of it is free to play. The part you don't actually play, so to speak. And finally, for the last bit of news, Arcage is only one day away from releasing its Blood Song update. Starting on January 26th, which is tomorrow, plenty of PvP-focused content, among other high-level content, is making its way to the game. Brand new balanced arenas, a new dungeon called Mist Song Summit, a new limited time event where players can explore for treasure under the sea, the ability to build statues of your faction's leader for buffs, gifts for returning and current players are just a couple of the features added in this new update. It's a pretty decent sized update to say the least, so stay tuned to MMOS.com for more details coming soon. Anyway guys, that's about it for all the major MMO news and announcements for this week. PAX South is coming this weekend, and Bakerman Brad and I are headed there to see what there is to see. 
From the looks of things, there might only be a couple of games there that are free to play, Dreadnought being one of them, so don't be too sad if we make videos over games that we're just plain interested in, even if they're not free to play. And let us know in the comments below if you plan on being there, so that way we can sort of meet up. But until then, if you're looking for more information regarding the news topics featured in the recap, check the links in the description below, otherwise head over to MMOHuts.com for the latest news and info on MMOs and free-to-play games. Feel free to discuss the news in the comments below, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.